Every so often, a toy comes along that is a real game changer. For Power Rangers fans, June has seen Christmas come early as Bandai and Tamashi Nations have released the 72nd robot in their Soul of Jagokin line. This time, it's the Power Rangers original Dino Megazord. Whoa, you're thinking, Bandai just did this in 2010, then they made it fancier in 2013, and then they made it stronger in 2015. Why are they at it again? But this time, it's a very special collector's item. No, but really this time. And as much as a no-brainer as it is to want this thing on first sight, there's a major concern to think about first, and that's the price. So if you need to stole a bit more courage to actually bite the financial bullet for this thing, here are five reasons why you should buy the Soul of Chagokin Megazord. Number one, the compromises removed. When I get a Megazord these days, it's common for me to want to make adjustments, be they stickers or more paint. It's kind of become part of the process. Rarely do you receive a Megazord and think, wow, that's great, no changes needed here. I think generally the legacy line from the Dragonzord onwards has achieved that but then there's usually some obstacle to face in the functionality of it, and that can't be changed. This is honestly the first toy in a long time where I've just felt awe of being in the presence of it. And you really should feel like that given the cost. The combining Dino Megazords to date have all had a weakness, be they stickers, sometimes of the lightning variety, general wideness, limited poseability, or even going weak at the Zord Builder knobbly knees. Soul of Chagokin is the first release where there are none of these compromises. Everything that we've criticised from previous releases has been fixed or just removed. So if you'd felt like you were settling previously, then this could be your answer. Number two, hidden connections. The design of this new Megazord has been painstakingly thought out. I'm sparing a thought for the staff of Tamashi Nations who have had to think their way through all the problems of the previous releases, because clearly they don't settle for any garbage there, or any shortcuts. A lot of their solutions are brand new. There are clips and hidden compartments all over this thing which make for a much more satisfying experience. Take for example the T-Rex tail which is now really poseable. I also like that you can now store the cannons of cannon mode in his chest, you can clip them in, they won't rattle about. The Mastodon shield, even the clip for that can be folded out of sight. You don't even need that but it does it. Speaking of the Mastodon, the folding flaps which cover the back and top of it, they're just great. Pterodactyl's clips to combine into Megazord mode can be folded down and out of the way, which is really handy because of what it leaves are the boxy engines that you see on the show. Triceratops, just like on the first release, the Triceratops horns come off, but this time there's something keeping them tethered into the Zord and it's a really cool chain that we saw on the show a few times. Bet you wouldn't have thought they were in there. The Sabretooth Tiger has a tail extension. Again, not strictly needed, but exquisite attention to detail. There are no obvious transforming ports when they're in Zord mode. Everything just folds out of sight. When I saw the initial pictures of these, I thought they were just non-combining Zord figures. Then, as a Megazord, they once again look like they should never be able to come apart. Which brings me on to number three, the ultimate poser. You can pose this Megazord with his weapons just as you want them. I've got this stance going at the moment. Poseable thumbs and opening hands make it possible. The hands even rotate slightly, which gives you more range of motion. This is not your usual up-down arms sort of posability. This thing is as poseable as an action figure and I'll say it again, has no place splitting into five zords. Number four, limited edition. Did figure arts teach you nothing? They did teach me something because I never bought them, so yeah. Power Ranger figure arts go for so much money on the aftermarket, and come to think of it, so do the out of production legacy Zords. This is it, the chance for you to get in on the ground floor at actual retail price. Yeah, sure, there's a risk that it might get cheaper, but think how crazy it would be if it does sell out and you end up having to pay aftermarket prices for it. This is a mainstream robot in a niche collector's line. This is really as good as it gets, but it's not likely to stick around forever. Part of me thought they priced it up this high because that's really the going rate now for an aftermarket Legacy Megazord. But a quick comparison to other Soul of Chagokin toy line robots made me realise it's actually a pretty fair price. Bottom line is, if this thing's selling out and only being obtainable by paying over the market odds on eBay is going to hurt you more 
than paying $300 for it now, and I think you know what you must do. Number five, to quote Brian Cranston Zordon, this is your team, and this is your time. I know to fans who are active within the Power Rangers community that it feels a bit like we've been in somewhat of a second golden age of Mighty Morphin for nearly the past half a decade. There might even be a temptation to wait, see what's around the corner again, see if any improvements get made. What I would say, in the case of this, is that I can't see anything of a higher calibre coming out later on, can you? Surely no one's working on a $600 version of this thing. So even if you only just recently bought yourself a Legacy Megazord and it feels a little too soon to dive in again, just remember how quickly these things disappear. And especially when you've got something like this, you're not going to find this on the shelf in Toys R Us. Know that your window of opportunity is now and only now. If you really want a highly poseable version of the robot you watched when you were a kid 25 years ago, then know that that has a very limited time on the metaphorical web shelf. I would have felt like I was doing the childhood me a disservice by not buying this thing. It really is everything we've ever wanted in a Megazord, and it exists here in real life today. So that was it, my best arguments at helping you justify to yourself reasons to buy this thing. It is a beast, I'm very glad to have it, and I do think you will be too. If you are getting your own, why not leave a comment below about your best reason to buy the Soul of Chigokin Megazord. Not to be too biased because I can appreciate that there are people out there where this would be an extremely foolish move to make. I'm going to do another video, 5 reasons not to buy. So go check that out and then maybe make your own fully informed decision. Thanks as ever for watching, subscribing, commenting, it really encourages me to keep making more. I hope this has helped, I hope it supports your plans too. Until the next time, see you later.